Picture this, it's the year 1957, a time when television sets flickered with anticipation, and the world was on the cusp of a new era. In the midst of this technological evolution emerged a TV series that would etch itself into the collective memory of generations to come. Harry Mason, a name that resonated with mystery and intrigue, graced the screens, and hearts were captured. Can you still recall that first encounter? The way the black and white hues painted a world where justice was the canvas in Perry Mason. The brilliant defense attorney wielded his intellect like a finely honed sword. Perhaps it was that pivotal courtroom scene that gripped you, the tension palpable, every word uttered holding the weight of truth and lies. Or maybe it was the quiet moments, the ones filled with subtle glances and unspoken emotions, that drew you in. In those moments, the characters became more than actors. They became companions in your living room, inviting you to join them in their pursuit of justice. As time marched on, Perry Mason continued to be a lodestar of entertainment. And now, as we journey back to that era, let's uncover some lesser-known gems about the show. Imagine learning how Raymond Burr, the embodiment of Perry Mason himself, brought the character to life with meticulous dedication or discovering the intricate dance between script and screen that gave birth to those unforgettable episodes. So, step into the past with me as we unveil the curtain on Perry Mason's secrets, reliving the moments that ignited your passion for legal drama. It's a chance to reminisce, to rekindle the emotions that this show evoked, and perhaps even to stumble upon new revelations that you might have missed. Are you ready to dive in? Then let's embark on this journey together, rediscovering the magic that captivated hearts so long ago. Perry Mason's 1957 TV series was marked by an intriguing auto-sponsorship twist that caught the attention of viewers. With each episode, the cars on screen seemed to shift allegiance between automotive giants GM and Ford, creating a subtle yet captivating element of surprise. One week, Perry Mason could be seen behind the wheel of a sleek Ford Skyliner, exuding a sense of modernity and class. Yet, in the following episode, a black Cadillac convertible would command his presence, exuding a different kind of sophistication. Paul Drake's ride oscillated between the sporty charm of a Corvette and the allure of a Thunderbird. Meanwhile, Traj, the tenacious police officer, made his statement in the form of a 57 Buick sedan before making a seamless transition to a Mercury. This automotive dance wasn't a mere coincidence. It was a calculated move that kept audiences intrigued and speculating about the rationale behind these vehicular switches. The alternating sponsorship, while subtle, spoke volumes about the interplay between entertainment and commerce during that era. As the drama unfolded within the Brent Building in downtown Los Angeles, where Perry's office was situated, it was these automotive twists that added an extra layer of excitement. And while the cars themselves changed, the show's enduring appeal and Perry Mason's quest for justice remained constant. In an era of shifting values and tastes, the 1957 Perry Mason series found a unique way to keep viewers engaged, proving that even the smallest details can leave a lasting impact. So, the next time you revisit those classic episodes, keep an eye out for the automobiles that not only transported the characters, but also symbolized the ever-evolving nature of television and advertising. Engaging and unexpected, the sponsorship switch-ups of the 1957 Perry Mason series exemplified the era's creative fusion of storytelling and commercial dynamics. A subtle reminder that even in the realm of entertainment, change is the only constant. Earl Stanley Gardner's surprising cameo in Perry Mason, the case of the final fade-out in the annals of television history. The 1957 TV series Perry Mason remains an enduring classic, captivating audiences with its gripping courtroom drama. Yet, nestled within its final episode lies a hidden gem that often escapes casual viewers' notice. Earl Stanley Gardner, the mastermind behind the Perry Mason novels on which the show was based, made an uncredited appearance in the series' swan song, Perry Mason, the case of the final fade out. Gardner's role as the second judge might seem innocuous, but it carries a profound significance. As the literary architect of Perry Mason's world, Gardner's presence in the courtroom brings a surreal meta-dimension to the narrative. The man who breathed life into Mason's legal exploits steps onto the screen, blurring the lines between fiction and reality. This unexpected cameo not only pays homage to the creator, but also provides a delightful Easter egg for the attentive viewer. 
Gardner's involvement in the show goes beyond this cameo. His creative genius laid the foundation for the series' success, ensuring its fidelity to legal procedures and intricate plots. The final episode's cameo serves as a subtle tribute to his contributions, a fitting punctuation mark to the show's long and prosperous run. While Perry Mason's cases might have concluded on screen, Gardner's legacy endures in the pages of his novels and the hearts of fans. His surprise appearance in the final episode serves as a lasting reminder of the man behind the iconic courtroom drama, etching his name alongside the fictional attorney he brought to life. In the realm of television trivia, this hidden connection between creator and creation remains a testament to the show's enduring impact. So, next time you revisit the world of Perry Mason, keep an eye out for Earl Stanley Gardner's unassuming yet significant moment on screen. In 1957, the iconic TV series Perry Mason took the nation by storm, captivating audiences with its gripping legal drama. Yet behind the scenes, the transformation of its lead actor, Raymond Burr, was equally captivating. Initially selected for the titular role, Burr faced a challenge. He was 60 pounds overweight. Determined, he embarked on a relentless crash diet regimen, shedding a considerable amount of weight and transforming his appearance. This remarkable effort not only secured his role, but also solidified his status as the suave and composed defense attorney we came to know. The show's success, however, was juxtaposed with a tragic pattern that befell its principal supporting actors. Ray Collins, William Talman, and William Hopper all met untimely deaths due to smoking-related pulmonary diseases. Collins succumbed to emphysema, Talman battled lung cancer, and Hopper's pneumonia stemmed from a stroke believed to be triggered by smoking. Their fates stood as stark reminders of the dangers of tobacco and cast a somber shadow over the show's legacy. The show's attention to detail was not confined to the courtroom drama alone. In episodes such as The Case of the Bountiful Beauty and The Case of the Fanciful Frail, keen-eyed viewers could spot Perry Mason's office phone number, Madison 5-1190, displayed in a screenshot of a phone book. Yet, the intrigue deepened as the series continued. In the case of the fan dancer's horse, Perry attempted to dial the same number, only to realize it was, in fact, the police headquarters line. Another twist emerged in the case of the bullet bowler, where Joe Kelly revealed the new number, 2712199, which Paul Drake memorably exclaimed was Perry's actual contact. As Perry Mason captivated the nation with its courtroom theatrics, its off-screen revelations and mysteries added layers of intrigue to the series. From Burr's transformative journey to the tragic destinies of its cast members, the show's legacy endures as a blend of drama both on and off the screen. Raymond Burr's witty encounter, unveiling the charm behind Perry Mason in the bustling world of 1957 television, one enigmatic figure captivated audiences with his unerring legal prowess, Perry Mason. But it wasn't just the courtroom drama that kept viewers on the edge of their seats, it was the subtle nuances that made the show truly remarkable. Among those nuances, an unforgettable anecdote emerges, shedding light on Raymond Burr's wry humor. During the series' original run, Burr, who portrayed the unflappable Perry Mason, found himself in an unexpected encounter with a woman in public. With unwavering determination, she posed the question that had likely crossed the minds of countless viewers, how come you never lose? Burr's deadpan response demonstrated his quick wit and a touch of his character's charm. Madam, you only see the cases that I try on Saturdays. This humorous exchange not only showcased Burr's ability to seamlessly blend his own persona with that of the brilliant attorney, but also highlighted the distinct way the show captivated its audience. Harry Mason's world was not confined solely to the courtroom, it extended into the fabric of popular culture itself. Beneath the surface, Perry Mason harbored another intriguing facet, the recurring cast members who lent their talents to bring the series to life. George E. Stone stands out as a prime example, boasting a staggering 45 credited guest appearances. Stone's portrayal of the court clerk added an indispensable layer of authenticity to the show's judicial proceedings. Not far behind, Kenneth MacDonald and S. John Lawner etched their names into television history with 32 guest appearances each, embodying the authoritative presence of judges that guided the legal narrative. Yet, Perry Mason's mystique reached even further. 
amid the intricate web of relationships between characters, an unspoken dynamic existed between Perry Mason and Lieutenant Arthur Tragic. Despite Tragic's familiarity in addressing Mason by his first name, the reverse remained true. Mason, intriguingly, never uttered Tragic's first name, maintaining a subtle distinction that added depth to their interactions. As we revisit the classic series, it becomes evident that Perry Mason's allure extended beyond the courtroom drama, delving into the realm of nuanced interactions and well-crafted humor. Raymond Burr's response to a curious admirer, the recurring cast members who became fixtures in our living rooms, and the unspoken dynamics between characters collectively contribute to the show's timeless appeal. Harry Mason continues to stand as a testament to television's golden era, where even the smallest details left a lasting impact. As we bid adieu to the enigmatic world of Perry Mason, let us not merely close the book on its chapters, but allow it to linger like the echo of a whisper in our minds. The year 1957 unfurled a tale that not only graced our screens, but wove itself into the tapestry of our lives. It's a story that reminds us that even in the dimly lit corridors of doubt, the beacon of truth shines unwaveringly. As you reflect upon your personal journey with Perry Mason, consider the moments that stirred your intellect and tugged at your heartstrings. Was it the indomitable spirit of justice prevailing against all odds? Or the labyrinthine legal puzzles that left you spellbound, piecing together the intricate puzzle of innocence? Perhaps it was the camaraderie among characters, their flaws and virtues painting a canvas of the human experience. These memories, these emotions, they are what keep the flame of Perry Mason alive flickering in the theater of our minds. And so, dear aficionado of this timeless series, I invite you to share your treasured recollections and musings. Let your words be a tribute, a testament to the impact Perry Mason has had on your life. Thank you for embarking on this journey through time and justice with us. Your time and interest are cherished threads that weave the fabric of our shared appreciation. Until we cross paths again, may the echoes of Perry Mason's gavel reverberate in the corridors of your thoughts, reminding you that truth is the cornerstone of virtue. With gratitude, 